Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. The New York State Commission on Higher Education, appointed by Governor Spitzer, recently released a preliminary report calling for sweeping changes in public higher education in New York. This first comprehensive look at New York's higher education system in more than 30 years called for, among its 28 recommendations, a compact to ensure proper funding for New York's public higher education institutions, 2,000 more full-time faculty at SUNY and CUNY, a $3 billion research fund, and programs to make public higher education more affordable. Here to discuss the commission, its charge, its work, its recommendations, its future efforts, and the prospects of these recommendations becoming real is Matthew Goldstein, CUNY Chancellor and member of the commission. Chancellor Goldstein chaired or co-chaired two of the major commission committees on tuition and financial aid and on capital financing. Welcome back, Mr. Chancellor. Good to see you, Doug. This is a prodigious piece of work, congratulations. And in its 85 pages, you've got a major overhaul of New York public higher education. But as I read this, I kept writing two questions. How, how do you do it, and how much, how much does it cost? Is this a blueprint for massive change, or do we really have, or is it a wish list, or is it both? Well, Doug, I, I think if, if this uh, set of recommendations were fully implemented, it would have a paradigm shift with respect to the future of both uh, SUNY in particular and the City University of New York. Explain, what, what would the new paradigm be and, and compare it to the old one? We, we have to go back uh, in time and look across the United States and see the kind of investment that has been made at states like Texas, UT Texas at Austin, wow. certainly the University of California system mm -hmm. led by Berkeley, UCLA, San Diego, mm -hmm. Santa Barbara. These are powerhouses. North Carolina, Chapel yep. Hill, I mean, uh, Michigan uh, at Ann Arbor, Wisconsin at Madison. These are extraordinary public universities, and the reason that they're extraordinary in part is the states in which they reside have made sustained investment over a long period of time and they are great institutions we have not seen that investment at city university or the state university yeah and and one of the the, the real striking findings which isn't all that surprising is that we're not systematically competitive with these these peer states and that we're declining as a leader in research and development we've been shortchanged here does this report provide both the analysis and will it stimulate the political will to do to do some of these changes Doug I think that's the big question here uh, and and I don't know where I'm going to come out on this in terms of my prophetic uh, calculus. But uh, it is going to be expensive, but more importantly, it's going to have to be sustained over a long period of time. It took a decade. You just can't, you know, infuse money for a year or two and expect these institutions to be morphed into a very different arena. This is going to take a long term commitment and to understand that the future viability of the Empire State is going to rest in part in creating an educated citizenry. And unless we take the lead with both SUNY and CUNY, we're not going to get there. And this is going to have effects on our economic competitiveness, not only within the United States of, of serving as an, as an attractor for businesses and the most talented people, to main, but also maintaining talent. And the way in part to do that is for universities to take a lead. Okay. 
Before we get into the substance, both the substance of the recommendations and the politics of their 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 acceptance and implementation, talk a little bit about the background of, of the commission, how it came to be, its charge, its membership, how it worked. Give us a flavor of the dynamics of the commission itself and how it came to recommend these these 28 recommendations. There are a number of us uh, in, in the state uh, over a period of time uh, that spoke to the new governor uh, at a very early stage about focusing on public higher education and encouraging the development of a commission to really take a look at where we are and what really has and to be done. And this is the first one in a long time. Long time. Uh, there hasn't been a commission in higher education for about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I think that was a very good step. It was an important step for this governor because it really said to me that here is a governor who gets it, that understands the importance of public higher education, and he assembled a group of 30 individuals, uh, and, and the assembly took place uh, sometime in the spring of last year, 2007. It includes people from SUNY and CUNY, mm -hmm. both presidents, the two chancellors, faculty, students. It includes people from the private university sector. It consists of business people, mm -hmm. and it consists of political people as so well. Really represented the major stakeholders in higher education. In Without New question. York. Without question. It was largely people from New York State. There was not uh, an effort made to bring in people from outside mm -hmm. New York State. The governor was focusing primarily on SUNY and CUNY, and even SUNY more so than CUNY, right. because one could argue over the past several years a real concerted effort has been made to really reform the City University of New York. Thank you, and, Mr. Chancellor. And, 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 and it's work. And, 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 you know, uh, I was there along with a lot of very talented people, mm -hmm. Benno Schmidt, the chair of our board, the leadership on the, on the campus's new president. Mm -hmm. So we've done an awful lot of work, and a lot of work still needs to be done. I think this governor recognized it. One cannot say the same thing about SUNY, uh, that there hasn't been a really an, enough attention to SUNY, although I will say very, very directly to you, there are extraordinary things happening at SUNY. I mean, right. great but campuses. But this is a monstrous system. This big campus of 64 universities. So this governor asked us, a group of 30 people that comprise the commission, to take a real close look at how we finance both SUNY and CUNY. And that's on the operating side and on the, on the capital mm -hmm. side. How students are assessed. Right over a period of time? What are the outcomes that we look for? How do we compare uh, to other states? And what are those states, what can we learn from mm -hmm. those states? What about the governance of SUNY? You mentioned 64 campuses. Crazy. It is a very large system to get your hands around. And, and, and these campuses are built politically. They were established in certain legislative districts right. and distribution, so they, they, it's far more than education. Right, involved right, here. right. There right, are, there are, you know, SUNY has major challenges in part because of its size and its scope and, to use your word, the stakeholders. So we started deliberating uh, in um, early, uh, very early summer, and we wanted to finish our work prior to the development of Governor Spitz's executive budget right. to help influence and to guide some of the thinking. So we, we worked tirelessly, uh, many, many commission meetings, public hearings, and you had committee meetings. I mean, it, it, and a lot it of really, research. It really took uh, a, tremendous, uh, a tremendous amount of time, and we produced a document mm -hmm. that we physically delivered to the governor yep. in the early part of December, and we await. He will give his state of the state on January 9th. Uh, it will be followed two weeks later by the release of his executive budget, and the real question that we await is, how, is how, how are these commission recommendations going to filter into what this governor is able to do? Absolutely. I mean, the, the, those, those are the key dates. Now, when the report was released, uh, the governor, and I'm paraphrasing, said that he was loath to endorse any particular 
uh, recommendations and it would come out in the state of the state and the budget and he called it you know bold innovative and then he added expensive we've got one of the one of the elements out there is the economy we've got uh, an economic uh, problem, the economy. We've got uh, a projected deficit of $4.3 billion. This is expensive. Do you see, what do you, what do you see the governor talking about? And do you see him focusing on, the, on these issues in his speech? It's hard for me to believe that a good part of his speech is not going to be devoted okay. to the recommendations on the Commission on Higher Education. I, I, I don't have any inside information that I can share with right. you about that, but it would, be, it would be inconceivable to me that he wouldn't devote a fair amount of time to talking about the uh, Commission on Higher Education. What I worry about is what I've been talking about is the perfect storm. Right. Go ahead. Uh, the perfect storm for me, or, or sometimes I would refer to this as the three-body problem, which is a classical problem in, in mechanics, and I'm not going to get into all of those details, but here we have a commission that has come forward with bold and, yes, expensive and far-reaching Recommendations. And getting reaction to these proposals but broadly. In, but ahead. in April of this year, uh, we started to hear about things like mortgage-backed securities. And sure enough, we developed a real problem in the fixed income market. Uh, the credit crunch was there. We saw major write-downs from some of the big investment banks. And it's going to have a chilling effect on revenues that this governor and the legislature can count on to support sure all of the legitimate needs of this state, and certainly it's going to have an impact on, um, on the amount of money that can be devoted to these recommendations. Sure. And obviously all of the political turmoil that we've experienced over the last uh, year uh, in, in Albany politics is not helping specifically? matters. Specifically? Well, specifically the, you know, the, uh, the relationship between uh, uh, Senator Bruno and, uh, and the governor. You mean the feud, the shootout, the right, war? Right. That certainly is not going to be helpful. So you have right. these three bodies swirling around, and at some point they're going to collide. And, and we're going to have to take a look at the residue of this collision. Uh, do we form a new see, element here? And What's the see, story? Well, I mean, or do we have could, a nuclear explosion? You, you, can, you could use the metaphor of an accelerator, where you're trying to discover new things, where you're circling you know, certain particles in one direction and another particles in the other direction, and they're going to smack, and then we're going to see what's going to happen. Hopefully, if there's any justice in the world... Uh-oh. We're if, calling uh, on justice. If, uh, ...that we will see an infusion of some resources initially uh, to support some of the recommendations. Now, from where I sit, uh, the a central recommendation is using what we call the New York State Compact. Yeah, to talk about her. that compact and, 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 and its model, the CUNY Compact. Yeah, it, this is modeled on, on something that, that we developed a couple of years ago called the CUNY Compact, which was a recognition that there has not been a, an investment uh, at the City University of New York for a very, very long time. That all of the, the work that we have done largely at this university as a result of reshaping our own resources and creating uh, priorities and putting aside things that we didn't think were as important mm. and then generating revenue that way to support new faculty acquisition, uh, new, new instrumentation in laboratories, more counselors, better libraries, all of the things mm -hmm. that we've been able to accomplish. But you can push that just so far. And then we came up with the idea of who are the stakeholders that really should be brought in for uh, investment. Certainly government, right. both state and local government. Certainly the university has an obligation to really think how it does business and how can it extract revenue by operating more efficiently and more with greater productivity. Uh, more inspired enrollment uh, growth and targeted enrollment growth, how that can be generated. Philanthropy. Philanthropy has always been used at private universities yep. and the best state universities of the, of, of the, uh, in the United States when they opened up their books. 
in the start of the fiscal year, they utilized some of the efforts in, in gifts that were given by alumni and friends of the university sure. to support um, not only ongoing operations, but much more innovation. And so that's what we're we calling We saw that for when you here. were president at Baruch. I mean, you really began it at, at, at that presidency. And the third, the fourth leg are students. I believe very strongly in having a rational tuition policy mm -hmm. as opposed to what we have now, which is a catch as catch can approach that really nobody is happy with, where we go for a period of time with no tuition increases and when the students can least afford it, a huge spike. Yeah. And we've seen those spikes and the very, very chilling effect it's had on students having to leave. So if we have small and predictable um, increases, and we've made the pledge, and we have, we have honored this pledge, that any student that would be placed in harm's way as a result of a small incremental increase, we will make that okay. student good. Okay, so, so working, go working together, we believe we can generate resources for investment where the state is not asked to pick up the full cost of a dollar of investment, but at least 20 cents on the dollar, and that we would get the remaining resources through the other stakeholders. And the state would pick up the mandated cost that they, they, would, they put on the that's un, right. both we are only systems. The compact only deals with the investment piece. Okay. And, and the investment piece is what made Michigan great and what made Berkeley great, and we have to do okay, the same Okay, so thing. if you were recommending to the governor what he would include as a policy recommendation, recommendation on January 9th or January 23rd. Almost the sine qua non is this compact, which this provides the, the, the funding for everything else. Right. I, I think I, I, would, I would really do the, 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 the first three things in, in, in order. Go ahead. I would start with the compact. I would make sure, to the degree that we can, that we have the necessary capital investment this is an aged infrastructure yeah. that we have at CUNY. It needs and CUNY tremendous, as well. Yeah. well, even more so than CUNY. CUNY is an older institution right. uh, than SUNY. I, I, and, and, I, you know, I'm in go 17 Lex. I understand. We go back to 1847, I, I, I and, and our buildings are not that old, but we have a, a significant number of buildings sure. that are 40 and 50 years old, and they need to be mm -hmm. maintained better than they are now. We need new construction. Those two, to me, the operating side through the compact and the capital infusion are fundamental in the way we go forward. What are we talking about in capital infusion? We, well, we have proposed to this governor this year for CUNY alone a capital request of about $7.5 billion on a going forward basis over the next five years. SUNY is asking for a capital request probably in the neighborhood of about $10 billion. Now, that sounds like huge I'm amounts joking. of money. Right. But what we're talking about is the debt service on bonds that would be floated over a period of time to get stuff in the pipeline done and new construction on an outgoing year basis. So on the debt service, while it's not insignificant, while the numbers sound daunting, the debt service, of course, is a much more manageable but expensive, right. expensive proposition. On the compact, on just the investment piece, we're talking about a billion and a half dollars of new investment through the compact where the state would be picking up approximately uh, $220 million for each of... That's annual. Annual for okay. about four to five okay. years. Okay. So that, that's, and if you look at the, um, at the commission's recommendations, those are the two areas that have really been costed out. Okay. The other area... And you were, you, you were associated in your capacities as chair or co-chair of the major committees for these two, right, that is correct. two pieces right. of it. The third, the third thing that I think is interesting and important, but we really have to be careful here, is this innovation fund, where we, we have recommended a $3 billion fund to be funded over a 10-year period for public and private universities to compete on a, uh, on a merit basis. And we still have to work out the, uh, the way in which this will work. The, the way you do this is really one of two ways. 
One, you could do it like the National Science Foundation does it with a peer review process right. where you have certain areas and people are doing very basic research. As long as you establish the goals appropriately right. that you're, you're asking for proposals. And I think more sensibly from a state perspective would be to do it a different way whereby the state says these are the areas that we would like to see mm -hmm. investment made in science and technology because we think if properly done could lead to a much more fertile economic and right. competitive environment for the state of New York. Right, so and there's I a real economic that, jobs component to this in a very right. direct way. And I think the Innovation Fund probably will have that as a primary objective to it. And, but we still have to work out the details. And while the commission has filed an interim report, the commission will continue to work and I will be working with John Sexton, the president of NYU, mm -hmm. with Joel Seligman, the president of the University of Rochester, with John Clark, who is the interim chancellor of SUNY, and myself, the four of us, to come forward with certain kinds of operating guidelines that we will be bring forth to the commission for final uh, and and you, and you folks expect to produce a final, you're mandated to produce a final report in June. In June. But the right. game is over by June. Yeah, I would say that the commission's work is largely done mm. by virtue of we developing an interim report. The fine tuning on how certain of these things work will find itself into the final And not report. only the fine tuning, but also the, the, the political strategy, the political involvement of yourself and other members of the commission pushing this. I mean, there's an advocate. You're just not an analyst here, you're an advocate. Right, well, the advocacy has started. Uh, it started uh, right when the commission started its work, but right. it's in full bloom now. And it's gonna take a lot of work, not only from uh, members of the commission, but certainly university presidents, our own university presidents here, our faculty need to be involved as advocates as well, our students, our alumni, certainly our board, friends of the, uh, of, of the university. Everybody needs to understand that the time is now for investment in CUNY and in SUNY. There are no easy ways to do mm -hmm. this. There has to be a commitment and a sustained uh, effort over a long period of time to make the kind of investments to bring these institutions to the levels that they are capable of operating but have not been able to do so by virtue of the lack of investment. And if you, and in a sense, the, I, I get the sense, if you don't do it now, meaning this fiscal year, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna happen. I, I think it's important that uh, the governor uh, in his budget show not only the, um, the support for many of the very good recommendations uh, that the commission has come forward with, understanding that we are in, in difficult financial times now right. and that there's a lot of other legitimate needs in this state, but that at the same time of saying these are bold and imaginative and important recommendations to show some effort to support the compact, yep. I think would be fundamental, and support uh, for the capital needs of both SUNY and CUNY. And hopefully you guys don't get caught in the crossfire between the governor and the uh, Mr. Bruno, and, and Mr. Spitzer at some point. Well, look, the, the, that's... But you gotta do what you gotta do. This is the three-body problem. That's right, the, we're back so, to the three-body problem. Mm -hmm. One of the one of the uh, recommendations that was particularly salient to me was this goal of hiring two thousand full time faculty, and and of that two thousand, two hundred and fifty superstars. Because you know, and I know, uh, we're too many adjuncts and not enough full time folks, and the lack of continuity, et cetera, is simply there. What are the prospects of real relief in terms of the ability of universities to put together 
those type of faculties. We have, we have demonstrated at CUNY that we can hire four to five hundred faculty yeah, a year. I absolutely. mean, we, we know how to and do you, it. And you've got, what, a couple of hundred coming up? We, several hundred. We have uh, about 450 faculty that are going to be new to the campus this year. The recommendation is for at least 2,000 faculty. At not, least. Not at least, least. 2,000. And it's going to be over a period of four to five years. Uh, it's very fun. That, that to me, is one of the most fundamental recommendations. Tell because the governor. We have to understand, Doug, and the, your, your audience needs to understand that 30 years ago, this university had about 11,500 full-time faculty for approximately the same size of the institution that exists today. Today at CUNY, we have about 6,400 yep. full-time faculty. We need to build up that faculty. You cannot have a great university without a great, committed, full-time faculty. What, what do you see yourself doing in this regard between now and June? And put yourself a year ahead, New Year's 2009. What do you expect to have happened and what should have happened? What should happen is that we should start the process of a sustained investment. We should hear the legislature and the executive branch of government saying, this is important to the future viability of New York State and we have to start the process now. And we need to get that message firmly entrenched into the DNA okay. of both the executive and the legislative branch of government. Are you sanguine? I am usually a hopeful person. And yes. in this case, the usual holes? Well, I mean, there are, there are issues that we have to understand, practical issues. Mm -hmm. But I think that within the practical issues that we face, there should be and there can be the start of a good sustained investment. Excellent. And you're coming back next New Year's around then to do a retrospective of the year? I would be pleased if you invite me, Doug. I, I, you're invited and thank you. Thank you. I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.